Okay. Hello again, everyone. So I'm not going to talk to you for too long, uh, but first of all, I guess I wanted to say a huge thank you to all our fundraisers. This is just a selection of our fundraisers over the last year, some of whom are here today. Um, obviously, as has been mentioned, our, our meetings, uh, we're, we're grateful for the, for the support we get from pharmaceutical companies that, uh, that help us host these meetings. Um, the research projects that we work on, the Pause GIST Clinic and the Tumor Bank, that's all funded through donations and support that we receive from people like yourselves. And we couldn't do what we do without you, so thank you. Um, so that leads me on to, if you would like to fundraise, um, we have a variety of fundraising materials and packs that we can help to you with and support your fundraising, uh, promote it via our social media. So if you are thinking of doing some fundraising, whatever it is, or if you'd like to get in touch for inspirational ideas, just contact me at fundraising at gistsupportuk.com and we have, uh, I can post some things out to you to help, help you with your activities. Next. Um, and on that, um, if, if you don't have a particular event in mind, um, uh, I can help you find one. And we also have places in certain events. So the first thing is the Prudential Ride London Surrey Cycle Ride, which I've done myself. It's a great event, closed road cycle event. Um, it's, it's fabulous, a 100 mile event. And we have places that uh, in that event from 2018 onwards. So if, if you or someone you know is interested in that, a keen cyclist, please get in touch with me. Um, as was mentioned, Alex, uh, uh, who can't be with us today, unfortunately, he's been doing this, organising this 100 kilometre cycle challenge across France. Um, thousand, sorry, so, sorry, sorry, thousand. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit bigger than 100 kilometres. Um, and he's been doing that. So he did it himself initially uh, three years ago. And then two years ago, he started organising the event with, with other cyclists and he ran it again this year. And uh, it should be continuing. So if anyone is interested in a slightly bigger challenge, uh, please do get in touch with us and I'll, I'll put you in touch with Alex. Um, the Spinnaker Abseil Challenge, this is actually now full, uh, which is for Paul's GIST, but it's just an example of something uh, we can help you organise. Um, there'll be over, I think, 40 abseilers going down Spinnaker Tower in May next year. So um, let, let us know if you want to do something like that. <laughs> yes, Nick and I did uh, abseil down uh, the orbital in the uh, Olympic Park, which is the thing that looks like a helter-skelter, and Nick particularly enjoyed it. When I say it's easy, if you trust that you're hanging from a 20 centimetre thick rope, 300 foot up in the sky, it's easy. It was easier for me only because my daughter was next to me and I spent the whole time concentrating on her. What she doesn't know is that that concentration took my mind off what I was doing because it's not easy. But, <laughs> but nevertheless, worthwhile. The view is great and it'll be great from there. I've been up there and there's a glass... Um, base that you can look down on. So just imagine you're falling through that glass base. It's as simple as that. Well, I'm sure we can arrange for you to do it again, Nick, anyway, if you're keen. Um, so yes, um, the other thing I was going to mention is the London Marathon. So those of you that might have seen on Facebook, unfortunately, we don't get places guaranteed in the London Marathon. However, um, if you are interested in doing the London Marathon or any other running events, please do get in touch with me. I've got a, a list of people that are interested. So when the public ballot opens for you to get places, I can alert you for that. There's also a competition at open at the moment with Virgin Money Giving where you can apply to win a place. So um, there are ways of, of applying for places and um, and a plenty of other events that are brilliant to take part in so if you are interested in a running event please do let me know uh, was there anything else on that slide I don't think so. okay right so the next thing is eBay um, we are now registered with PayPal and PayPal giving fund um, so if any of you are keen eBayers um, you can select on eBay to donate a portion of the proceeds of an item you sell to charity um, obviously that benefits us but um, you also get the benefit is in that uh, you don't pay eBay fees on the portion on which you're donating to charity. So for instance, you're selling an item for £10, eBay uh, at the end will take a final value fee of 10% normally. If you donate, select to donate 50% of that to charity, you'll only pay 50% of the eBay fees, so you'd only pay 50p in eBay fees. Is that my math right on that? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, um, take a look at eBay if you're, if you're fancying a clear out and, and think of donating to uh, Just Support UK. Next one. Uh, recycling. Get my leaflet. On your tables, you'll see there should be one of these. There's some more over in the 
gathering area over there. So we're now registered with uh, a company called Recycling for Good Causes. Um, and what they do is they collect items, a variety of items, which includes things like old mobile phones and laptops, which I know I have plenty of kicking around at home. And, uh, and they take these and recycle them. And the money they raise through the recycling of these items, they give us 75% of that. And then 25% goes to their running costs. So if you have any of these items at home, Bring them along to one of the meetings and give them to me. Um, if you've got brought any with you today, just pass them on to me. I'll be floating about throughout the day. And uh, and you can raise money for just support in doing so. Now, whilst this company doesn't accept ink cartridges, we also have an agreement with a printing company in Bristol um, who will accept uh, printer cartridges. They, the only... Um, exception to this is they don't take toner cartridges or Epson printer cartridges but if you have any for instance HP ones uh, we get a pound for each printer cartridge I believe so if you have any used printer ink cartridges bring them in to the meetings again pass them on to me I'll be floating about uh, next one please and then this brings on me on to ways to donate so like I said if you're doing a fundraising event uh, the popular ways to to uh, to raise money for Just Support UK is set up a, a Just Giving page, Virgin Money Giving. Uh, we're registered with both of those. If you need any help at all setting up one of these pages, just, just give me a shout at the email address and I can do what I can to help. We'll shortly be registering with another service, a platform like this called BT My Donate. Um, the reason we're registering with them actually is because these websites charge fees to the charity and BT My Donate is quite uh, innovative in that it doesn't charge us any fees. So I'll be promoting that soon. Um, other ways, you can also do a direct bank transfer. I can send you the details if you need. Uh, you can post as a check to our treasurer, David. The details of where to send that are on our website, or I can send it to you. And again, you can uh, transfer money with PayPal uh, to PayPal Giving Fund. Now we're registered with them also. And don't forget gift aid. So anyone that's a UK taxpayer um, can reclaim, we can reclaim gift aid on your donation, which adds an extra 25% on. So, um, and it, you can qualify for gift aid even if you are uh, receiving a pension. So um, all you need to do, um, if you're registered with Virgin Money Giving or Just Giving, they'll automatically collect this from your donation. Um, or if you're doing offline donations, as it were, you can use our sponsor form, which is also on our website, or I can post you hard copies or email it to you if you need. Or if it's just an individual donation from yourself, you can complete a gift aid declaration form. Again, this can be found on our website, or I can send you a copy. And that's, that's enough of the, the fundraising and donations. Just an activity that I've got today for you, which leads us nicely onto our first talk, is um, I'm trying to gather information on side effects. So can you put your hands up in the room if you're taking either imatinib, sinitinib, or seregorafenib uh, at the moment? So quite a few of you. Or have you ever taken one of the drugs? So quite a few. So one of the, the gaps, I think, at the moment in our, our literature is guidance for patients on side effects, particularly on sinitinib and regorafenib. And what I'd like to do is get your experience of taking these drugs. So there's a whole range of side effects that people seem to... to find on these drugs and it varies from person to person and it seems to be a lot of trial and error in the things you can do to manage them and I know in the time that Richard's been on sinitinib we've tried various things and certainly become better at managing his side effects so I'd really like to hear from all of you and build up a sort of a database if you like of side effect management tips so on your tables and if you haven't I'll bring some around there's post-it notes and through in our gathering area there's three flip charts, one for each drug. If you just scribble on the post-it note, what was the side effect you experienced? And did you have an effective way of managing it? And stick it on the relevant board. If you need any more post-its, just give me a wave and I'll bring them around. And that's everything, I think. Next, there was another slide, which had my email address on. So yeah, this is just to remind you of my email address. Any questions about fundraising, just give me a shout.